I would say that the most popular sports supplement, probably a close tie between protein supplements and creatine, especially that uh, you know, sports supplements related to bodybuilding, I should say. Uh, and a lot of people question the value of protein supplements. I mean, do you really need a protein supplement? Well, let me start off right off the bat by answering that question. If you're getting enough protein from solid uh, quality protein foods, animal protein foods, you know, meat, fish, chicken, eggs, that type of thing, turkey, if you're, if you're eating enough protein from foods, then a protein supplement really is superfluous. Uh, it doesn't really, it's not going to help. It's like filling a glass. So, I mean, if you're getting enough protein from food, uh, you know, taking an, ex, an extra protein supplement is not going to really do anything. It's basically a waste of money. No matter what the ads say, uh, the protein supplements are, are of, of use uh, mainly if you, for example, can't consume enough protein from your food sources, or if you're in a hurry, uh, let's say you don't want to cook a meal or something like that, or you want to make it convenient. <clears throat> for example, um, my my typical uh, breakfast on the days I train, I mix a whey isolate protein supplement with strawberries and a banana, and uh, and I mix it in water. And I put a couple other things in there, some hydrolyzed collagen. I think I put in some, I add some creatine. And I just mix it up. And, uh, you know, that's my uh, breakfast. It digests very fast. And it's, you know, it's easy. I mean, I don't have to cook anything. And it's a, it's, a, it's convenient. So, you know, the, so one of the really basic good, good qualities of a protein supplement is convenience. Now, the most popular animal-based protein supplements are whey and casein. Uh, of course, whey is a uh, more rapidly acting protein. It, uh, it's absorbed in about 60 minutes, and it reaches a peak in the blood 90 minutes. When you ingest casein, uh, it, uh, it curdles in the stomach almost like cottage cheese, which allows its amino acids to uh, be released uh, over a period of seven hours. The thing that makes it curdle, the, re the reason that it's so slow release has to do with this uh, this peptide that's found in casein called caseomorphin that basically slows the release of the amino acids from casein. Uh, they're both, of course, both casein and whey are derived from cow's milk. Cow's milk is 80% uh, casein and 20% whey. Uh, then, there, of course, there's the plant-based proteins. This is uh, good for people that uh, don't want to eat any animal food, such as vegetarians and vegans or vegans. Vegans, I guess it is. Uh, they, uh, you know, you have your choice from soy, pea, hemp, or rice protein. They're equally as, uh, they're not quite as good as the animal-based proteins like whey and casein. However, if you double the dose, for example, if you take, let's say, two scoops of, uh, of the hemp or, or rice protein, it usually uh, gives you about the same amount of um, amino acids, including essential amino acids, as found in one scoop of whey. So all you got to do is double the dose, and, you know, it's, it's just as good, basically. Well, what does the research show about the effectiveness of protein supplements to help build added muscle mass? A 2015 review in the journal Sports Medicine concluded that for untrained individuals, consuming supplemental protein likely has no impact on lean mass and muscle strength during the initial weeks of resistance training. However, as the duration, frequency, and volume of the resistance training increases, protein supplementation might, may promote muscle hypertrophy, and, in, and enhance gains in muscle strength in both untrained and trained individuals. Evidence also suggests that protein supplementation may accelerate gains in both aerobic and anaerobic power. In other words, when you first start training as a rank beginner, protein supplementation is, has almost very little or no effect. But as you gain experience, then you know you start to break down more muscle tissue, or whatever. Then the protein supplement starts to work; it starts to kick in, and you start to get much more value out of it. And uh, I would say that protein supplements are of much greater use to those with more training experience rather than somebody who's just starting out lifting weights or something like that. A 2017 review published in the journal Nutrients found that whey protein supplementation enhances whole body anabolism and may improve acute recovery of exercise performance after a strenuous bout of resistance exercise. This study featured 12 healthy young men with at least six months of training experience. Still another 2012 review published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition looked at a series of randomized controlled trials related to protein supplement use and concluded 
that included 680 subjects total of all the of all these uh, various studies and concluded that protein supplementation increases muscle mass and strength gains during prolonged resistance type exercise training in both younger and older subjects. A systematic review published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine in 2018 found that dietary protein supplementation significantly, significantly enhanced changes in muscle strength and size during prolonged resistant ex resistance exercise training in healthy adults. Increasing aging reduce uh, incre uh, increasing age reduces and training experience increases the efficacy of protein supplementation during resistance exercise training. What, with protein supplementation, protein intakes in amounts greater than 1.6 grams per kilogram of uh, body weight per day do not further contribute resistant exercise training induced gains in, in fat free mass. In other words, this particular review concluded that. And, uh, protein intake of more than 1.6 grams uh, per kilogram of body weight uh, doesn't increase uh, any more than that, does not help you build muscle. I would disagree with that because uh, other studies have shown that a, a more appropriate figure is about 2.2 grams per kilogram or about uh, maybe a gram per pound of body weight, which is something that I've always suggested for at least 30, 40 years now to people that ask me how much protein should I ingest to gain muscle. I tell them to uh, ingest one gram of protein per pound of body weight for your target weight. In other words, if you want to weigh 200 pounds, ingest 200 grams of protein a day. It usually works well for just about everybody who works out. Both resistance exercise and protein supplements help to build muscle because they they promote the activity of, of the, uh, the uh, mechanistic target of rapamycin or mTOR. mTOR uh, is a uh, protein that plays a pivotal role and stimulating muscle protein synthesis. So working out alone stimulates mTOR, but you went, when you add protein uh, with the essential amino acids, it, it goes further than the training alone to stimulate increased muscle protein synthesis, which most often translates into increased muscle size and strength. Studies also suggest that protein shakes help to retain and may promote muscle gain, even if you're following a weight loss diet. One study of 40 men showed that those following a high-protein diet achieved, achieved via protein supplements lost more fat mass and increased their muscle mass when they added strength and cardio training compared with the control group that didn't ingest protein supplements. Another study found that ingesting a whey protein supplement prevented the decline in muscle protein synthesis that occurs following an extensive weight loss diet. In other words, uh, taking a, uh, uh, keeping your protein intake up high when you're uh, losing body fat, will help you retain lean mass, will also help to maintain your resting metabolic rate. And uh, a good way to do this, if you don't want to add a lot of calories, is to ingest a protein supplement because it's very low in calories, like a whey protein, very low in carbohydrate, but it'll provide the extra protein you need to help maintain lean mass when you're on a diet. Protein helps to control appetite when dieting because it promotes the release of gut hormones, such as peptide, tyrosine, tyrosine, and, glu and glucagon-like peptide 1. Protein also reduces levels of ghrelin, which is a, uh, uh, a, a compound or a protein uh, produced in between meals that's, that stimulates appetite. Ghrelin, ghrelin is the most hunger-stimulating uh, substance produced in the body. And when you eat uh, protein or take a protein supplement, it reduces the release of ghrelin or it lowers its level. So you're not as hungry, which makes it easier to, to maintain uh, a diet. Protein aids fat loss by, by also by promoting diet-induced thermogenesis, or DIT. DIT indicates the amount of energy needed to metabolize each nutrient relative to the number of calories ingested. In other words, protein takes more calories to met metabolize itself compared to fat of protein. Uh, the values of protein range from 15 to 30 percent in contrast to 5 to 10 percent for carbs and only 0 to 3 percent for fat. Protein, again, requires a lot of calories just to be metabolized. That's, why, that's one way it helps you to lose body fat. Also, pro, high-protein diets stimulate gluconeogenesis, which is the process of producing glucose from protein, fats, in the absence of carbs, which is believed to burn extra calories in the process. One study of 10 healthy men reported a higher energy in ex expenditure in a high-protein diet compared with the control condition, determining that 42% of that increase was due to gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is also the key to why following a low-carbohydrate diet 
that features a high protein component will will not cause you to lose muscle because any excess protein that's consumed on a uh, low carb diet uh, undergoes uh, the amino acids undergo gluconeogenesis, which provides a form of glucose. So, in other words, you uh, you, you won't lose muscle because your body is still producing uh, glucose from the excess protein, and your brain and your nervous system are getting the glucose it needs. High-protein diets are known to promote fat, fat oxidation and fat loss. Evidence suggests that increasing your protein intake from high-quality sources, such as protein shakes, may be associated with fat loss from your midsection, also called visceral or abdominal fat. The visceral or deep-lying abdominal fat is considered by far the most dangerous body fat because what happens is visceral fat is constantly being released and it travels through what they call a portal blood system to, the, to your liver and in the liver it's converted to things like saturated fat it promotes cholesterol it promotes uh, cholesterol synthesis I should say it promotes uh, insulin resistance uh, it's a pr uh, helps to, to promote uh, the onset of type 2 diabetes etc cetera, etc cetera. so anything that helps to reduce visceral fat uh, will is really good for your health Although it's often said that you can get fat from eating too much protein, this never happens in reality. I mean, I see all the time I see these articles by dietitians on the uh, internet warning that, you know, in, in, uh, uh, consuming excess protein will make you fat because each gram of protein contains four calories per gram, and anything that contains calories could theoretically make you fat. And that's the key word, theoretically, because in the real world, nobody ever gets fat from eating excess protein. In fact, they've had studies in which bodybuilders consume five times more protein than the suggested amount needed to build muscle, and they didn't gain an ounce of fat over a year's time. No fat whatsoever. They actually lost fat. So, how much protein should you eat to, uh, how, how much protein should you consume to gain added muscle? Uh, based on on most of the studies I've seen, the ideal amount seems to be about 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight, and again, that equals about a pound of protein. Per, I'm, I'm sorry, about a gram of protein per pound of body weight, whatever you want to weigh. That amount will both maintain muscle on a diet and will also help you gain muscle if you if that's your goal, to, to, to gain added muscle. So, again, you know, that's about it for uh, uh, protein supplements. They're useful under certain conditions, but, again, I would emphasize the truth of the matter is, and I've had an article about this in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, how you know how, how to get almost all your protein from just eating plain ordinary pro foods? Uh, it's not that hard to do, uh, but for whatever, whatever reason, convenience or you just don't like to eat a lot of protein foods, a protein supplement could come in handy. I'd say to stick with the higher quality ones if you can, such as whey protein isolate and casein. If you are a, a vegetarian, however, the the other sources I mentioned, pea protein, hemp, rice protein. They're suitable substitutes. You just have to double the dose. Uh, if you want further information about nutrition, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, anti-aging research you can use today, fat loss techniques that really work, uh, exercise science, uh, hormonal therapy, women's health and fitness, uh, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post new information right off the press uh, on nutrition, exercise science, general health, and medicine. There's also an email portal on my Applied Metabolics website where I answer short questions submitted to me by current subscribers only. I don't answer unsolicited questions. Uh, this is on my Applied Metabolics website. Please don't send me unsolicited questions because I just won't be able to answer them. Only from current subscribers. So uh, uh, that's about it, I'd say. Um, you're welcome to leave comments under these videos, including comments for, uh, or suggestions for future videos. Uh, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, uh, Bruno's not in the video today because he's taking a nap. You know, he's a senior citizen. I don't, like, I don't like to disturb him when he's sleeping, so maybe he'll be in the next video. So go to your local shelter, adopt a best friend like Bruno. Take care.